Now, in the 1990s, the Cold War had ended, procurement budgets were shrinking, and there was an urgent need to make defense modernization more affordable. DARPA was asked to lead DOD-wide initiatives in dual-use technologies that leverage the commercial manufacturing base, and also in technology for affordability for military systems. We worked closely with the manufacturing technology community and the services to pursue two parallel threads. The first was in tools, infrastructure, and enabling technologies for component-level design and manufacturing. The second thread was system-level advances that built on best commercial practices, enhanced with new information technology, and applied to DOD needs in affordable, low-volume production. This second thread was executed by DARPA systems offices in programs like Global Hawk and by DSO in partnerships with other DARPA offices and, and the services. Another example is the Solid Freeform Fabrication Program, which used DARPA's leadership in material science to address physical manufacturing processes and expand the envelope of what today is called 3D printing. There were a few capabilities out there, including stereolithography that 3D systems had developed. It was very synergistic at the time to move from concept models and tooling to making parts with form, fit, and function. Overall, what we wanted to do in these programs was create a digital thread that connected design right through to manufacturing to speed up and reduce the cost of producing defense systems. I think we're well on the way to doing that. So what was the impact of DARPA investments 20 years ago? You can see it in products and production systems that persist today. DARPA's Affordable Multi-Missile Manufacturing, or AM Cubed program, broke the old paradigm of having a new production line or a whole new factory for each new tactical missile. Manufacturing was re-emphasized by DARPA starting in 2010 with such programs as open manufacturing, material development for platforms, and transformative design. The open manufacturing program was created with a simple vision. Help build the confidence in new manufacturing technologies so that adoption is not considered a risk. To build that confidence, a program was created that would rapidly develop the understanding of what manufacturing parameters mattered and how they impacted system performance. And Lockheed saw that as an opportunity to take this concept, coupling informatics with data analytics to address critical processes. Over the seven years, we addressed all the unknown unknowns of composite bonding, understood the knobs on the shop floor that allow reliable bonds to be made, and ultimately created the foundation for our DOD certifiers to adopt certified bonded structure. Another program was the Materials Development for Platforms program, MDP, linking the tools being used by the material developers with those that were being used by the design community and the manufacturing community. By creating this framework, materials could now be developed that would address requirements that were of interest to the targeted application. The intersection of information technology, design, and manufacturing continues to be a target-rich area. However, if you look at where these innovations are used, you will find that it still takes a very long time for these new materials and manufacturing processes to impact how we actually design and build things, especially when people's lives depend on it. To make things more complicated, additive manufacturing techniques create materials on the go whose properties are different from the ones we have studied over thousands of years. So, how would you compensate for this? Or better yet, take advantage of it. We could open up entirely new operational envelopes while also integrating additional functionality. To accomplish this vision, DARPA is working on several programs such as trades and fund design. They aim to change the relationship between humans and computers, to make them true partners in design rather than a tool that records your decision and acts like a large calculator. DARPA has always based its work on an understanding of current and future national security needs. Advanced manufacturing will always be a high priority need for DOD, and I expect that DARPA will continue to be called on for leadership that benefits the nation and the world.